You are watching a clip from the John Perry channel, Genetics and Evolution. More on the skull size that accommodates the brain. Have you seen or heard of these cases of hydrocephaly where the, the skull gets huge? Mm -hmm. Their skull will be maybe like twice as the size of a normal yeah. skull because they're getting, they call it water in the brain. It's just, you're making too mm -hmm. much spinal fluid. That does suggest that the skull is growing based on pressure within it, as opposed to some sort of a pre-programmed size that the bone's gonna grow. So yes and no. Most of these kids, like, unless they're, yeah, I mean, usually they're, people try to keep them alive and, and then, you know, eventually the skull ossifies. Bone will try to meet bone that condition starts basically from birth or like within a couple of months. Uh, and, and it starts to separate because again, those bones were never fused. So the, they separate and separate. And then eventually the bone tries to grow together. That isn't to say there is supposed to be a predetermined size. There kind of is a predetermined size, but it's based on several factors. It's based on partially your brain, partially a timing of ossification, I mean, maybe even if you had a normal sized head, but you delayed ossification in the skull, maybe your brain would grow bigger. I'm, I, I don't think so. There's probably research into this, but I think it's multiple factors that then kind of give us the average human brain size or average human skull size. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the I was talking to the bone clones guys about because they actually have one of the specimens is, is one of these. It. He was an adult. He died in his 30s, which is super Whoa. rare. Usually you either have to treat it right away or yeah. you'll die. And this guy somehow lived to his 30s. But they said that when they got the skull, it was almost paper thin in some spots. Of course. Yeah. And so they had to be, it was really hard for them to make a cast of it because you have to put it in this plastery, rubbery stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't want to crush it, of course. Right. So it was... Uh, it, that that is interesting. So the skull, I mean, it was it is insanely huge. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. it's unbelievable. This is a human, but it's it's like like he was saying. It's it actually did cause problems for the skull. It's not not a nice thick skull like you would you would hope. And that's one of the reasons why these people have such a difficult time surviving the condition because they could they could get a or they could get a brain bruise, I guess, really easily. I mean, I assume there's a lot more problems than just having a thin skull. I mean, having yeah. that much pressure on your brain cannot be good. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think now it's it's early. The early treatment for it now is just a shunt to kind of take out mm -hmm. as much of the fluid as possible. I don't know what the more permanent treatment is, but it. I mean, I'm a big fan. Big fan. Oh, it sounds horrible, but I'm super interested in pathologies for this exact reason, right? They help us understand what is normal or why we actually get the normal physiology because if you if all you have is normal skulls you don't get these questions right you don't right. get why why does bone do this or why does bone do that well that's it for this clip but don't worry i post clips regularly and every thursday i post completely fresh content make sure you're subscribed liking and commenting is also welcome